Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Talking Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jay Pallinson, and today I'm joined by Jeremy Smith, and we're going to be here to talk about Moussa Dembele. Uh, first, Jeremy, nice one for coming on. How are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Yeah. Um, I actually met Freddie Lundberg this morning, so not too interesting for Everton fans, but quite oh, nice anyway. <laughs> I, I absolutely loved Freddie Lundberg growing up. He was one of my favourite non-Everton players, so... I respect that a lot, to be fair. Um, fantastic football. What are you talking to him about? I assume not Moussa Dembele. No. It was at, it was um, some kind of charity event that I attended and he was on the panel. All ah, right. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I'm sure people appreciate that. He's a fantastic player. But um, we'll talk about Moussa Dembele today anyway. Obviously, um, French, he's possibly international, youth international, quite um Predominantly youth anyway, played a lot of games, the 21s and stuff. Never made a senior pace, what I could see. Obviously played in France the last few years. Um, obviously he's played in England, he's played in Scotland, and he's being linked to Everton at the minute. So just sort of then off the bat, Jamie, what would you sort of say, uh, somebody who hasn't watched a lot of Moussa Dembele, certainly not over the last couple of years, what would you say has been sort of his strengths since he's been back in France? Um. The weird thing is that you mentioned not watching him the last couple of years. I mean, depending on if you watched him this season just past and the season before, you've got a completely different player. But um, he is sort of the kind of, I guess, archetypal number nine. I mean, he's not he's not the tallest, but he's a sort of proper fox in the box goal scorer who, if he's not scoring goals, is doing very little else. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's not going to sort of, go out of his way to run channels or, you know, bust a gut to come back and help the defence or come up with too many assists. He is, you know, generally does all his business in the middle of the, in the middle of the penalty box. And when he's on form, he's a very good finisher. He's good in the air. He's got good big game temperament. He scored a few very important goals in his time. And for what it's worth, he's sort of done the business in Britain for for Fulham and then for Celtic. So he has got that sort of British football experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when he was at Celtic, obviously parallels we made, not necessarily to the type of player he is, but obviously parallels will be made with uh, Odson Edouard, who's obviously there at the minute. He came in for a good chunk of money when he went to Celtic, whereas obviously I know Dembele went on a free when he went up there. Um, Edouard came to England. It's not really worked out. He's not playing every week and he's not scored too many goals. Um, Obviously, Dembele made a similarly big switch up. He went to Lyon. Uh, he started out quite well there. He had a couple of decent seasons, but then he went alone to Lesco Madrid. Last season, you say, was was really poor for him. It wasn't great for Lyon as a whole, obviously. But um, how would you sort of sum up the last sort of couple of years? Because you say he's a completely different footballer now, which is obviously really interesting for someone who's not old at all. He's not even 27 yet, so... Yeah, to be honest, I was quite surprised he's still that young. But um, and obviously that's kind of a positive. There's still, you know, arguably he hasn't even reached a, the peak for a footballer. So there, there's still a lot to work with there. But yeah, it's just like I said, the last two years have been sort of night and day, and and it, maybe it sort of says a lot about him as a footballer. I mean, I suppose that happens with strikers in particular. It's a real sort of confidence thing, but he, he seems to really blow hot and cold, like go through amazing purple patches of goal scoring and then, and then just vanish. Um, So I think it was like two years ago, three years ago, sorry. He, yeah, he did very little for Lyon. He went on loan to Atletico Madrid, did absolutely nothing there except win a champions winner's medal. Um, but didn't really contribute anything to them winning the league. Um, I think that the season before that, he uh, he also scored two goals to knock out Man City in the uh, like the Super Eight Champions League thing. The, the the you know the one that was affected by COVID. So again, like I said, some um, knows how to score important goals or you know score goals when when the eyes of the world are watching. Mm-hmm. Then last season, he. The first half of the season wasn't great. And then the second half, I think he scored the same number of goals as Mbappe. So the back end of the 21-22 season, he scored something like 17 goals, I think it was, in the in the league in the second half of the season and finished with a really good record. I think, well, 21 goals across the season. So it shows like really poor first half. 
Um, and so, and like you said, he's France under, under 21 international. I think he might hold the record either for the number of caps or the number of goals for under 21s. He was pre selected for the senior squad. His form was so good. He didn't quite get into the squad, but was definitely in Deschamps' thinking. And then this past season, he's just completely vanished. And I would say it's kind of down to the style of play, but that doesn't really explain it because, you know, Peter Bosch was the manager under whom he scored a lot of goals the year before. He was the manager for the first 10 matches this year. Um, Blanc's taken over, but hasn't changed loads about the formation. He's changed a bit in midfield, but he's still playing with either one or three up front. Um and De- Dembele's barely had a look in. I think he's only sort of had eight starts maybe this season. Um, and when he's had the chance, so like when Lacazette has been injured and, and he's come in as a starter, he hasn't taken it. And I think more worrying, certainly for Lyon fans, was that he just looked disinterested. And like I said, I think for someone who's just an out-and-out centre-forward, if you're not scoring goals then you're often going to look very poor and sort of the opposite is true as well. You you, be, you can be forgiven for doing nothing for 89 minutes if you pop up with a 90th minute winner. Um, but he just hasn't at the same player. He hasn't had the same number of chances, but when he's had them, he hasn't taken them. And you have to wonder whether, you know, the reason he hasn't been given those chances is because he's looked disinterested in training as well. And yeah, Lacazette has had an amazing season, scored 27 goals, um, so kept him out. But, you know, had he been really pushing and and doing something when he was given the chance, you'd have thought that they'd have been able to find a space for both of them. You know, Lacazette can play on the flanks. He's not, obviously, he's, he's, you know, past his peak and and isn't going to be sort of bombing up the wings too much, but he can play wide. So, you know, I think there is scope to adapt to, to playing with both of them. And Dembele just didn't do enough to to sort of make anyone even think about putting him in the team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was gonna I was gonna mention obviously Lacazette playing, obviously he's had a really, really good season. Um, as you say, in a, in a not particularly great Leon side or, or season for them, but um, that's obviously part of why. I suppose he's ended up in this situation, but perhaps even if maybe he's just that if Lacazette maybe hadn't had this season, he still might not have featured that so much because it looks like he he's kind of on a different planet at the minute from what what Leon want to be doing right now. Would you say? Yeah, I mean, there's there was a point in the season when Leon was struggling to score goals. They got and there's two or three players who sort of you know started getting stick from the crowd and and. Um, but, you know, one of them, the one who probably got more stick than anyone else, he was loaned out in January. So it kind of took away a little bit of competition as well for Dembele. So, yeah, he really, he he could. And similarly to Dembele the year before, I think it's more in the second half of the season that Lacazette's really sort of caught fire. So there was room there to do something and keep the fans on side. I don't think it helps. You know, I don't, I don't want to say that off-pitch stuff affects what happens on the pitch but it's the last year of his contract and you know there there were talks there weren't talks no one's really sure about whether he was offered an extension whether he wanted an extension and and you know when when it becomes clear that a player is going to leave with no fee you can sometimes understand the 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 club thinking well you know we're not going to bother sort of investing in you or even worrying about you for the rest of the season but then that being the case, you'd have thought he he would want to really be motivated to, you know, bring on all the other clubs that that want to sign him up and and sort of ramp up his signing on fee or whatever. So it's just it's really been a really a real sort of head scratcher this season. Just why his form's gone off a cliff? Why he just seems to have completely fallen out of favour at the club? And as I said, I think, you know, he is a very good, he's proven he's a good goal scorer in more than one country, if not Spain. Um, he's proven he can score important goals, you know, last minute winners in in sort of big explosive derbies against Marseille, in which has sort of become a bit of a derby. The two clubs really don't like each other. Um, so um, he's got all the tools and he's only 26. It's just 
he needs to maybe it's just the case of needing to find another club and a new challenge that that can sort of really motivate him again. Yeah, so I was going to sort of come on to that. It just looks like again from the outside looking in that like a fresh start was was very much needed. Um, I think going to let's go Madrid and as you say they they obviously won the league that season. Again, leaves behind Luis Suarez had a really good year, of course. There, um, forwards going to Simeone and let's go. Maybe don't always work out anyway, so it's maybe wasn't the best move on his part in terms of football. But obviously, he didn't come back and had different periods of success, and and maybe not so much as well. So it, it is really interesting. Um, you mentioned that obviously, obviously, Laurent Blanc came in at Lyon and changed too much about the way they're playing in terms of the the, the shape of the team and, and what have you. What would you sort of say is the best system for Dembele or the best sort of formation? Because obviously, as you said, he's a very much a penalty box striker, not going to be wanting to run the channels and maybe do some of the other sort of work outside of the box. What do you think is the best setup for him, would you say? I think, you know, possibly Leon play maybe a little bit too vertically for him. You know, he's he's all right at holding the ball up. He's not the quickest in the world. He's, you know, he's strong. He's got good body strength, but... He's not going to sort of turn someone and, and really out sprint them. Um, so maybe sort of the fact the fact that Leon play a lot down the middle didn't play to his strengths. So um, and maybe that's why he's he's done well in British football, where maybe there's sort of more of a propensity to sort of you know put crosses in and and certainly you know Calvert Lewin on, on on top form or top fitness. Yeah. Has, has definitely thrived at that kind of thing. So, you know, it's something that Everton have proven that that they can do, that they're good at. And so I, th- I think, you know, it would probably be a good fit for him in that sense. Um, but, yeah, as I said, like, you know, a real sort of penalty penalty spot kind of striker that whether whether it's, you know, the ball coming aerially and, and in beating his man in the air or, or um, you know, accomplish finishes from from relatively close in then then that's where he's going to do his work but it's yeah it's not so much sort of like you know Leon this year have been playing a lot with a number 10 and and I'm not sure that works entirely I think he could definitely play in a two with a, a slightly deeper lying striker but I'm just not sure that he's the type that, that plays where everything's coming through the middle yeah absolutely I mean I think that's kind of the general consensus. I think whoever turns into the minute looking at this um, move that has been linked relatively heavily this week, a little bit last week as well as that. I think you've got some people who have sort of heard Moose and Dembele and they think the player who did well in at Fulham did very well at Celtic because had good times at Lyon. And then you have the side of people a bit like, obviously, like yourself, who've watched him and have seen the situation pan out and maybe you know it's not as simple as Everton. If they were to get this lab, they're going to get a bona fide guaranteed goal scorer I'm not sure how it's going to go yet how do you see it panning out of Everton where to sign him I think he will play up front on his own Um, there wouldn't be a kind of player directly behind him in that sense in the way that maybe is at Leon. there'd be a couple of midfielders who get up and try and support he'd have to probably do a little bit more work than maybe what it sounds like he'd be maybe keen to do how do you sort of see that panning out of Everton where to go ahead and try and, and get him in on a free I'd like to think it would work out I mean you sort of want to think that guy is 26 years old with you know genuine aspirations at one point for the France team and you know with Giroud aging and Colin Mouani maybe not really an out and out centre forward there's there's space there to to break into the France squad if he refines his top form so um I think going back to England Britain where where he has he has done well he's got a good reputation which might help as well um to to a club and a type of football that I think suits his game I would really hope that he sort of gets his head together and and um gets back to his best and if he does then um okay I don't don't think he's ever played in the Premier League I'm not, I'm not sure from memory if he was only in the second here with Fulham. Well, I was but... going to say, funnily enough, he actually made his, I believe he made his Premier League debut against Everton or his first start. I think he played two games that season. That was the 13-14 season when Fulham went down. So obviously, you then, and I think it was straight away, but he came into the Championship team and then went on a free to Celtic, didn't he? And then, I mean, obviously to Leon. So very, very brief experience. To say. I'm pretty sure it was only two games he's played in the Premier League. Yeah, so I, it's hard to say for sure, but if you've done it in the championship and if you've done it in the in the 
Scottish Premiership, then you'd like to think that he's got enough skills and experience and, you know, playing for Lyon, playing for even Atletico, even if he didn't score there or settle there, you know, the fact that a club like that showed interest shows that there's a lot of calibre there and, and um, you know, he's, he's scored important goals in the Champions League, like I said. So we know he's got the ability. Um, it, it just feels like maybe it's more kind of in his head in the last season or, or so. So if he can really get back to full motivation, then I think everything's there for him to do well at Everton. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, of course, which we haven't seen too much over the last couple of days. Obviously, it's Wednesday now. I think the news came out on Monday. Ten Everton and Galatasaray were linked, which isn't... Uh, hugely endearing that it's a, a, a club in, in Turkey that are seemingly interested in the services but obviously we'll see how that pans out I think just finally I mean something that I've been reading from people who are get a bit more in tune with him than I am have been talking about physically but just not sure where his body's at at the minute I think did he have a was sort of a heart issue when he was at was it Atlet- Atletico or was he back at Leon by then I can't quite recall but I don't remember that to be honest. No, no I, say, I, I saw someone mention it on Twitter and I haven't, I haven't seen it myself. But obviously, you said how it could be whether he's physically not in the best state or whether it is sort of mentally sort of upstairs more. Do you think it's a completely unknown quantity or do you think that, you know, if he comes to everything and he's fit and firing, it could be somewhere where, so long as he adapts to being back in England, he, should, he could do okay for us? He's had injuries, but, you know, I. I can't recall any really serious ones. I think, you know, you expect someone who's sort of battling with opposing centre-backs to to get a few knocks and things. Um, but he can certainly put it about as well. And, you know, he's not a sort of small, wiry little thing. He's, he's you know, he's pretty well built. And so he should be able to stand up for himself. And uh, again, he's he's used to the physicality of, of England and Scotland. So... I don't think that should be an issue. I guess the concern is, you know, depending on maybe how soon you sign him and what kind of pre-season he has, that he needs to get back to full match fitness because around 20 appearances this season, but most of them off the bench, he's probably not really at his physical peak. Um, so that that's something you need to sort out. But again, 26, he's got, you know, he, he certainly should be able to 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 get back to his best quite quickly. Yeah, but that's the hope anyway. Obviously, we'll see what happens with that. I think that's probably quite, um, obviously, no one knows how things are going to go, but obviously quite encouraging. I think that's probably what I'd say based on also what you said, if he can sort it out upstairs and if he's mentally and his head's in it and he wants to give something a fresh start, obviously, you'd like to think he'd rather come to the Premier League than, than go off to, say, Turkey somewhere. Certainly, he does have aspirations of playing for France at, at senior level. So, um, I think, you know, the only thing that you sort of worry about is sort of having finished 17th, you kind of putting all your, you know, all your hopes in him to to change that around. But, you know, as a Brighton fan, I'd, I'd expect him to score more goals than Mopé. <laughs> really but a different, kind, a different kind of player. I think, you know, Mopé can do the running down the channels and isn't really prolific enough, I don't think. Whereas... If Dembele sort of hits a, a purple batch of form, he's going to come up with a lot of goals. Yeah, I hope so. Absolutely, and I say the the minimum asp- the minimum expectation I think we'd have is that he does better than um, Neil <laughs> Mope has last season. That's for certain. But um, nice one for that, then, Jeremy. I think we'll we'll leave it there. Obviously, you can let us all know what you think in the comments. Whether you think uh, Moussa Dembele could be a success out, and if they do end up trying to sign him or not. And uh, I say thanks very much for coming on, Jeremy. No problem. Thanks a lot. Much appreciated. Thanks, everyone. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Nice one.